Well, good morning, fish heads. Jennifer Cravasi, Jekyll Bates, and welcome back to another spray session. It is the first day of October, I think. It's Sunday. I'm in here all by myself, which is pretty awesome. That hardly ever happens. So I've turned off the background noise for you guys on this one. This is two, or these are two, eight inch bullshad swimmers they have that real tight serpentine pattern running through the water you can burn them you can count them down they can swim in a variety of different areas in your water column just all around one of my favorites i think mike prefers the nine inch which is this guy over here so we're going to add him into the mix you can see right away that there's quite the difference but only an inch, but the profile is bigger. Um, so these are all gonna be done the way this guy is back here. This is my winter crappie, and it's really hot this time of year in a pattern in Florida and Texas, um, and that's where two of these are designated. This one was purchased by, a, okay, so Florida for these two, Texas for these, or for this guy. Um, can do all the same pattern, so we're gonna run through various elements of this video on all or one or two of them for you guys this is not a difficult pattern but when you do it it's it turns out pretty elegant and there's some there's some tricks and buzzers and whistles and stuff that you can throw in there to, to make it pop a little bit more i'm going to go ahead and show you my finished product on this and then uh, you'll see that there's the only true black on here is going to be on these and, and crappy do have those little those little flaps all because they're in the sun they're similar to sunfish they're not in the same family but close they're cousins um and then there's a good bit of glitter which i found some glitter that i really like that really shines in clear water and stained water um, stays on very well and works with an airbrush pretty well so that's the pattern we're going to be doing today let's paint some cool stuff I've got my pressure set to about 20 so you can hear it come out pretty well first thing that we're going to be doing I go back and forth on favorite blues I think it depends on the pattern blue is not a color that I use a whole lot of um, sometimes in the cheeks for gills which I'll be doing in uh, another video in this grouping on this psycho gill um, I'll use this opaque sky it's just a level even you can put some glitter in this and mix it with a little silver if you want flash um, or you can mix it with this stuff this is the pop and flash so I'm giving you guys all the all the toys at the beginning of the video but the way you put the pattern together is is the best part of it all but you can you can use these you can mix these two together and they do real well a lot of people ask why I teach you guys secrets and the whole thing with me it started out remembering how to do my own patterns and then helping just here and there but I still teach you guys because all of you that and there are a lot more of you now and, and I'm actually grateful for that that are painting some people would say there's too many and that we are oversaturating the market by teaching some of the the stuff that we teach but nobody that gets into painting whether it's for themselves or they want to prospectively run a business and have clients and customers want to do a bad job none of none of you i've made mistakes over the years some people that i get repaints on they're like man i, I sent this you know and they they really they messed it up and can you fix it so that's one of the reasons and the motivations that i still teach today uh, I, I want to make sure if you're gonna send something to a customer that you're able to do it to the best of the ability that you have. And if I'm able to help you in that way, I really, really am grateful that you guys are watching me. I have decided to shoot this way, front at, only because it's a little bit easier because I'm normally standing my baits like this on these helping hands 
all the stuff that I use is in the description below. So if you have any questions or comments or where to get stuff or where to get paints or the stencils that we're going to be using, all that stuff I'll link below. And if I miss anything, most of the time you guys remind me that I've missed something and I'll put it back in there. Um, but going back, circling back to the original, we're going to be using this bloodline. This is the Createx Expired Blue. It's really good uh, on zombie as well if you do zombie patterns or dead if you're uh, if you're like skull effects asylum skull asylum um, he does a lot of really cool stuff so this is just a very light just along the upper fifth or maybe fourth of this and we're going to blend it down in with other paints as well so it's just a very light from nose to tail You don't want to run heavy on this, just nice and light. And then just kind of feather a couple of strokes in just to help get that fade come across the back. That's fine. And then a little bit lighter going into it. And that is all the blue we need. And you just kind of want that to fade into the background. It doesn't need to be super bright or super heavy. One of the mistakes, and, and I was talking to Mike Russell about this, when you start out airbrushing, you have a tendency to want to really blast that, you know, just shoot it as hard as you can and not use the trigger function and pull back slightly because this is a dual action. Uh, there's a lot of things that this can do um, that I don't necessarily need to use all the time, but you can really finesse this airbrush. This is the Iwata Eclipse HPCS. And I have, um, I'm running two of these constantly on the setup. And then I also have the HPC Plus, which is also really good. It's a little bit uh, more of a finesse. And it's weighted a little bit differently. There are a couple things that you can do with this, but that's a whole different video entirely. So now that we have that one, I'm just going to go ahead and roll the blue out of A little bit lighter fading down and that's all all of it all the fade really is it's just you're you're giving a lighter spray across the body of it and then don't forget to do the tail the back of the tail and a little bit lighter as we go down and I'll come back and hit this tail because that is important a lot of times you see a beautiful bait and the tail is like white, like a canvas. Like if, if I paint on a canvas, I want to make sure that the edges of that canvas are painted as well as the front the stuff that people see more than the sides. Cause it just looks, it looks kind of odd to me if I'm looking at a painting. So on this one, we'll start, just hit the back row real quick. Uh, there's, there's no right or wrong way to do it as long as you're hitting the just the top of this. And you just kind of run that down to where it's getting lighter as you go down the body. You don't want it super contrasty, like you don't want. I don't even know, I, I don't even know if I can press that hard. Um, you don't want a, a big drastic difference between the blue and the white. Let's run that paint out. And that is our Bloodline Expired Blue. Our next color is going to be just a medium gray. These are basic colors for you guys. Um, anybody can find them. You can get them at Hobby Lobby on uh, Blick Arts, which is where I buy a lot of my stuff. Um, hobby hobby shops michaels has them online at amazon i can leave you links for that as well but this medium gray is going to go over the top and the back and i think from probably the beginning that i started filming on youtube to do spray sessions i realized that if you come top down you're going to get some overspray which is going to fade it into your your other color. So you don't necessarily want that blue to disappear, but you want to kind of get it in the background. 
and then just a little bit more prominently over the eyes. But you can almost see the depth in this as you work that down because what will happen is, especially with the scaled baits that Mike has for bull shad, it creates depth in itself. When you shoot a certain way, as long as you're not blasting at 90 degrees aiming right at it, you're going to get that scale depth. Our third color is just a standard opaque black. But again, we're not going to be blasting this color. This is going to be where we use this little fun stencil that I showed at the start of the video. This is available on Amazon. I got it in a two or three pack. And I can definitely, um, I think it's Tim somebody or Tom. Um, it's a brand name. Hang on a second. Should say on there. CTS675 from Craft Beat. Or Craft Treat. Sorry, it's Craft Treat. Got to get my trifocals out, folks. Um, but it's cool. Cool pattern. Good, um, almost like digital camo type deal. And I use it on this particular one because I really like how it works with the crappy pattern. So the first pass here is going to be super light and a little bit fuzzy intentionally because we want to build that depth. Um, I get asked a lot, you know, why do you have not tight lines and tight stencil pattern? mixed in with very tight crisp and that's just to create a little bit of depth you can see it in this where that uh that fuzz just kind of drops into the background it just creates a little depth and that's just how i like to spray it and then you can come back over and get that that tight super crisp spray Hmm, to the face too. And you kind of mix it up. I use various different parts of the stencil. There's, there's no one cool way to do it.
once you're finished with the digital camo stencil, you want to come back with whatever black is left in your cup and just hit real light across the back. And just in a couple of spots, I'm going to come down above the eye and kind of fade into that gray. And again, super, super, super light. Black is a, a very engulfing color and it eats other colors just like red does. Red is also a very prominent color. So we just want to be super light and sporadic with where we put this down. A little bit into the tail as well. Now on these, unlike that trick gill over there, there, uh, there aren't any ear flaps because this is actually a shad design. So the whole point in this is to have the pattern that your customer needs on a bait that they have confidence in. And these serpentine style swimming bull shads probably, in my opinion, some of the best in the game. Now you notice that the eye is already on this one. That's because the client had one that was already there. And it's fused in to the point to where I don't, I would do damage to the resin if I tried to pry it out. So what we can do, because it's a crappy pattern, is we can black the entire eye in, which is what we're going to do. So that's super easy. That's one of the last things that I'm going to do on this one because now we've got some, some cool stuff that we're going to add in to this pattern. I think I might make it a little bit darker behind there. And, 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 we want to put that little tiny hint of an ear flap in because white and black crappy both have it. So I'm going to bring my pressure down to 10. Just aim right behind this gill plate right here in the dead center. Put it right there. And put it right there. Just a small one. And that just reproduces what's already on the bait. Make this a little bigger to match the other side. And then do the same thing on this. Just dead center helpful hint along the way before we trick it out. I used to use q-tips to clean up the cup and get any excess paint out and uh, just do all that stuff but what I found is especially because I'm cheap and I don't buy real expensive q-tips because it's cotton but what was happening was some of the filaments uh, and the, the threads of this q-tip were getting stuck in the cup and it was being a pain in the butt so I now use just a cheap art school paintbrush and just kind of swirl it around in my airbrush cleaner or whatever it is that you use. Usually with darker colors, like in, in real thick opaque colors, I'll do regular airbrush cleaner and then I'll do a quick shot of 91% alcohol in this. And then I'll go back to airbrush cleaner. You don't want to leave any kind of um, alcohol in your cup because that will eventually wear at your needle. The needle is super important to keep as long as you possibly can. Yes, you can replace it. But if you don't have to, why would you? You can get this at any Walmart. It's uh, it's the folk art. It's dragonfly glaze. It's really good because it adds a, a good bit of glitter and flash into whatever it is that you're doing. And the medium, well, you're going to see how thick this is. I think you guys can see that. It's pretty thick. But mix it right into the cup with some golden airbrush medium. This thins it, keeps it transparent so that you get all the qualities of what you want, but it doesn't change the color. Uh, this will also add just enough of a transparent white glaze into it because yeah, it's not super clear. Uh, as you can see, there is a little bit of white. I just use the, the base of that same air, um, airbrush paintbrush that I cleaned it with 
to mix the medium and thin this glaze down just enough to where it looks really good. And I don't know if you can see that, but you've got quite a bit just right there. But we're just gonna come and just get the entire thing. And I'm running about 45 PSI because you don't want any of the glitter flakes to get clogged in your airbrush. So the harder you push it out, the better off you're going to be. Now you just want to coat real well. And you only really need one coat because this stuff is pretty thick. And now you know the reason why I didn't want to do that eye. I don't want glitter on the eye. We'll do the eye after we finish everything else on this nine inch. There it goes. Get that off of there. I knew there was a tiny claw, but again, push this out quick and all that stuff is gonna fly right out. <laughs> that little helpful tip and coated and we're gonna let that dry I'm not gonna heat set this I've got another project so we're gonna turn the cameras off I'm gonna do something else for about 15 minutes and we're gonna come back to this the reason that I don't like to heat set this or push air at it is that it has a tendency unless it dries naturally to keep the paint underneath of it a little bit wet and you really don't want that when you clear coat because that can ruin your entire thing that's blasting way too fast still have it on the glaze setting and it is a glaze so the dragonfly glaze is dry dry to the touch no residue but you can see how shiny that is that's why I let it air dry definitely don't want any DLAM or bubbling on these so on this I'm just gonna very lightly come from the underside and then just brush it on just a tiny way up to about the top of the fin, the peck fin. Do the same thing there. Just not much, not much at all. And then just the very back towards the tail. And that is that. Let's do it real quick to the other ones. Um, if it's your preference and you want to put that that sunburst orange or red on the throat that, that's kind of a crankbait trick and it's not really accurate like you don't see a whole lot of healthy fish swimming out there with that bright red you know they've, they've got gills yes which is i guess what that's supposed to represent but those aren't on the throat those are a little bit closer to the side there so i, I know what it's trying to represent i just try to get it as, as factually accurate as it can. Of course, it doesn't have glitter on it either, so you can take it either way. Take it, take it, or don't take it. What is it? Um, take what you need and throw the rest out, put it in the garbage. And I've got just a couple drops of that canary yellow. And for this, really don't need to do the entire pectoral fin I just want to hit the outside edge here, just nice and light, and let that fade down. I'm going to do all three on one side and then come back and do the other side. With a little bit of control, it's, it's not that hard to do. Just kind of trail off the trigger as you're moving down. You don't see it, it's off camera, but I'm brushing this off. And then we're going to flip it. And do this other side. There we go. And that's pretty much it. This is not a difficult pattern, but it looks really cool and it's very effective, especially if you're in the south this time of year. Uh, pretty excited about it 
And I hope that Jim Fallon in Florida and Britt McKinnon, who is uh, a friend of ours in Texas, um, I hope that you guys have a lot of success with it. So as I am putting the eyes on this and wrapping this project up for you guys, just a quick go over. We started with a white base and I will preface that by saying that I started with a primer on the resin and I'm going to show you what I'm using. It's not a big secret. I'm sure you guys probably go through a ton of different stuff trying it out. I've tried, Lord have mercy, all kinds of stuff. I go between the KBS self-etching primer and this Seymour Industrial Strength, which is a, a self-etch primer and a filler. It's a high solid, really, really good stuff. I've had no issues with this and I've been on this for certain baits for probably eight months to a year now. So I'm pretty stoked about this. I can drop a comment down below on, uh, on the description on where you can get it. So nope, I am not sponsored. They don't pay me a dime, it just works. And I'm passing that knowledge on to you guys. So we started out with that gray primer. The other, the other stuff that I use, the KBS self etch is also very good. Um, use that as well. Love it. Never had any problems with it. This, um, the Seymour, the MRO, is probably 6 or $7 less per can. Um, the, the aerosolized fluid ounces are the same. So... Started out with the gray primer after sanding and then went into the white base coat and that expired blue right there we did and then faded that down, did a medium gray over top of that and then added in our depth on that digital camo stencil, which is pretty cool. Then added in that dragonfly and that is the gold, red, blue shift. See, that looks so pretty. Um, and after that, we added just a little bit of yellow. And I waited until the very end to do this eye. Yeah, crappy have golden, like silverish golden eyes in nature. Unfortunately, if the eye is fused in and I can't pry it out, it looks really weird and completely unnatural if I try and make that a golden and then put a black pupil in it. it. Just doesn't look right at all. But just a basic black works very well for that. Works very well for a shad pattern. If you do shad eyes on this. Or if you do a bass. Uh, the larger bass definitely have blackish eyes. Oh, that eye is not going in there properly. So I'm just gonna pop it out or move it. Just get it in the socket a little better. And sometimes you gotta play with it, especially if it's a repaint like this one is, when they send you stuff and it's, um, and you gotta pull the eyes out. Sometimes whatever they've glued those eyes in with um, wants to stay in there in that socket and it kind of looks a little weird. So you gotta, you gotta play with that eye until you get it in the, the right spot for where you want it and then clean your blade off. This is a Kershaw. That's uh, definitely an EDC for me. It's come in handy numerous times. And just really only need one drop. You don't need a whole lot of this at all. And then I'm gonna let this sit. I'm, I'm not going to run this up to the clear coat room uh, simply because I like for this glaze to really get dry before I start shooting clear coat on it. Um, just, just me, but I wanna make sure that I turn over the best product that I can. You guys should too. And I hope that I've been able to teach you guys a few things. This is, again, a very simple, cool pattern. It's great for this time of year. Uh, if you have open water throughout the winter and you're one of those hardcore swim bait folks, um, such as myself, such as Mike, such as a lot of people, because it's like a booming industry right now. It's kind of like the last Western frontier. Um, super cool, and it's just awesome. And if you have open water, you can pretty much fish swim baits. 
year round. This is definitely one that I would fish year round because you can kind of move it around through the water columns and you don't have to burn it to get it to respond to you. It swims very easily. Most people, it's just chuck and wind. They're not going very deep, but you can count this down. You can slow it down a little bit. You're still going to get that good serpentine movement. That's it, folks. That's all the news there is fit to print. And I've had a blast hanging out with you guys on this Sunday. It's Sunday when I'm filming. Hopefully, I'm going to be able to edit and upload tonight for y'all. So, cheers. Happy casting from Jekyll Bates. Tomorrow. Just a quick update here. Jen Crevasi, Jekyll Bates, and I did promise. I don't know which is going to drop first, the, um, the spray session or workshop update. So this is the quick workshop update on how this pattern came out. This is that digital camo winter crappy. And this is on the nine inch bull shad, serpentine style action in the water, super, super bait. Uh, one, of, one of the heavy hitters and one of the, uh, the go-tos for Mike and a lot of other trophy fish hunters. So this is how that turned out, super happy with it. Lots of shift in there, got some glitter, a little glaze, couple of basic colors, and there is a spray session, spray that. there's a spray session on how I did it. See ya.